Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. And angels, very interesting. I got to talk to some folks last night who have not been to church in many, many years. And um, they got to hear the message last night. And did you know that even many, okay, let me just say it this way. Almost 80% of even your non-Christian friends believe in angels. Even people who don't. Uh, believe that God intervenes in their life. All those things. Almost 80%, 77% by the last study done believe in angels. Now, if you're a Christian, the statistics are more closer to 98%. I'm not sure what's wrong with the 2% of people. Um, maybe they didn't ask the question right. They said 98%, and I thought, what do those 2% believe? God created the heavens and the earth, but not angels. I don't know what they do with that one. So we don't think about angels a lot, but at Christmas time, angels are all through the Christmas story. And if you're like me, and I left it back there as usual, but um, how many of you have an angel somewhere on your tree at home, on your Christmas tree? I actually had somebody last night say, I don't have a Christmas tree. So um, how many of you have an angel somewhere in your yard or on your tree? Okay. So angels are all through the Christmas story. And so what we're going to do, I've never done a message like this. Uh, for Christmas, uh, as Christmas is approaching, but I thought, you know, the angels are all through, why are the angels all through the biblical story, and yet we don't say much about them other than, you know, they announce. So here's what I want you to think about today as we talk about angels, okay? I want you to know that angels are a reminder to us of the awesome power of God. We forget so often how awesome God is, and the angels are God's servants. But also, it's also to let us know of God's presence. God is interested in your life right now. He's interested in what you're doing, and there are angels that are among us. There are angels that are a part of life. Now, there's two extremes. You have some people who all they talk about is angels, and I'm going to give you a few little things to balance that. And they, you know, they're worried all the time, and they're freaked out, and you know, they, they feel the air conditioner come on, and they think that was the breath of an angel, and then you say that was the air conditioner, um, right? And then you have other people who are like, well, I, you know, I don't even really think about that. If you're a believer today, I want you to know, if you will, when you pray, pray with these things in mind, it will change your prayer life. If you're not a believer and you're here today, maybe you haven't been to church in years. Maybe you're watching online and wondering, what in the world? How did I come across this sermon on angels by some dude who's not even wearing a long sleeve shirt? I'm in Florida. It's 80, like five degrees outside. Maybe you could begin to think, you know, there is something beyond what I see. When I talk to people who aren't believers at all. One of the questions I ask them, I, I don't start by talking about angels, I ask them, do you really think there is evil in the world? And people will say, oh yeah, there is evil in the world. There are people who almost seem possessed. And I'm like, well, the word almost you could take out, but because we have an enemy who's come and his job is to steal, kill, and destroy. But you have a God who is much greater than your enemy. So before we begin, I want to give you just a few biblical truths about angels. And here's some things from Scripture. Some of you have heard about angels. Some of you have heard things about angels. Some of you have a certain way of thinking. So what do we do? We go back to the Bible and we say, what does God's standard Scripture say about angels? So first of all, we should never worship Angels. That's in Colossians 2.18. You can look it up. But basically, angels never point to themselves. Anytime you see an angel in the Bible, there's actually a few times where the people bowed at the angel's feet. And the angel looked at them and said, get up. Don't do that. Don't worship me. Don't bow to me. I am not God. You don't bow to me as an angel. The second thing you need to know, angels serve believers. In Hebrews, it says that the angels are actually here to serve us, not the other way Around, By the way, it, you know, in, in the end time, Satan, one of his big deals, the reason he's a fallen angel is he wanted to be served. A third of the angels, and that's, that's the other thing, a third of the angels fell. That means two-thirds of the angels are on our side. That's good news. 
You need to realize that angels are also powerful and frightening. There's all types of different angels. There's people who've done studies on this. But you need to know that they are awesome. When people saw angels, they didn't say, oh, look, cute little baby. You know, you see these little baby angels and stuff. Oh, no, it would be, oh, right? That's why the angels constantly, when they, there's only one time in the Bible that the angels didn't say, don't be afraid. And that was because it was a guy that they wanted to be afraid. He was a jerk. We will judge the angels, 1 Corinthians 6. This is a big one. We don't become angels when we die. Now, please don't do this, okay? Because I do funeral services all the time. You know, in the next few weeks, I'll probably have another one. And there's always Aunt Ruth that comes up and says, you know, so-and-so is an angel now. That is not the time for a theology lesson. I don't look at Aunt Ruth and go, no, they're not. I look at Aunt Ruth and I go, you know, I know they're in God's presence, you know, or whatever. And, and I hug them and I'm, you know, I don't. But you need to know when your loved ones die, they don't become angels. That would be a step down. Because here's the deal. Angels do worship in God's presence. But as a believer, you are part of his family. And if you're Italian, that means you're part of his family. <laughs> we shouldn't take angels lightly, Jude chapter 8. Jesus spoke about guardian angels. People say, how do we get this idea? Jesus actually talked about the, the angels, and specifically about children. Hebrews 13 says you may be entertaining angels. It said when you're kind to a stranger, you may actually be entertaining an angel. Now that doesn't mean, let me tell you what the sheriff said. Don't give homeless people money. Just, I'll make it that simple for you. Unless God gives you an audible voice that says to give a homeless person money, let me tell you that that's not a good idea. You're enabling them. It's one of the reasons we work with these other organizations. However, you need to realize that everybody you come in contact with... You, the Bible says there are angels among us. There could be an angel in church here today. I can tell you who it's not. <laughs> and then finally, angels want us to worship God. That is over and over. Angels are not to be worshipped. I know some of you wear angel pins. It's not evil to wear an angel pin. You think an angel's on your shoulder. Listen, God is all-powerful. But the truth is that he has given you status above the angels. So, you know, we read the Christmas story. We see angels on trees and angels everywhere. So how should we respond to the angels in the Christmas story? Now, everybody has an angel story themselves, or most people do. I even talk to people who have, aren't believers, and they were asking me about a situation that happened, wondering if that could have been an angel. And I went, oh, which is a really good answer from Dr. Eric Brookins, who studied many years of theology. What do you think, Pastor Brookins? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I was driving home one night from Orlando and, uh, on 192. I used to go to seminary in Orlando and would drive back to Melbourne when I was young and in my 20s. About 1130 at night, I had class all day from 9 in the morning till 10 at night. And then I had to drive the hour and a half back down 192, which is a two-lane road at that time. And as I was driving one night, I was coming home, and I saw cars coming, and one of the cars got in a hurry and decided to pass the other car literally as I was on top of them. Now, I to this day cannot tell you what happened, but somehow three of us fit on a two-lane road, and nobody hit anybody. Now, I'm surprised I even have mirrors left on my car, because as I drove, I thought, you know... That was either angelic or I'm just the awesomest driver in the world. And for those of you who know me, you now believe in angels. <laughs> so there's these opportunities in life. And I think we're going to get to heaven. And some of you as teenagers did stuff that as you look back, you think, I should be dead. And you're going to get to heaven. And, and one day Gabriel's going to go, hey, Brookins, come here. I want you to meet somebody. And they're going to say, hey, do you remember that time that you tried that stunt on your bicycle? If it wasn't for me, <laughs> you're lucky God the Father said to protect you. And so I think that when we get to heaven, we're going to see and realize the presence of angels. I tell people sometimes when they're driving behind a car and all of a sudden that car is going five miles below the speed limit and you start getting aggravated. I said, hey, maybe that's your guardian angel trying to slow you down. You're honking at him. When you get to heaven, he's going to be like, you remember you were honking at me that day? You were yelling? I could hear what you were saying back there. 
By the way, I'm sorry, I do an Italian accent for, that's not a terrible Italian accent, for angels, because they work for God the Father. <laughs> they wipe people out. They protect people. You can become part of the family. So let's look at a few things today. Number one, you and I need to recognize that we are in an unseen battle. You are physical and you are emotional. We know that. So we know some days you wake up and physically you're tired and so you feel kind of grumpy. Some of you woke up today and you're kind of grumpy. Cherie, you kind of grumpy today. So Cherie woke up grumpy today. All right. And, and, then, and then she let him go back to bed. All right. So... Um, <laughs> So you wake up and you feel a little grumpy, right? So that's physical. But we're also emotional. Sometimes we go through something very emotional. We can be weak or tired. You know, people ask me all the time, I don't know why I'm so down. And so often, I'm, these are the same people that just weeks before told me about a horrible situation that happened. And I say, well, of course, you've been through an emotional nightmare. Of course, you're exhausted and discouraged. But then you and I also need to realize that there's also a spiritual battle. And sometimes what you and I need to do is pray. Well, we always should pray, but, but we really should take time to pray and say, God, you know what's going on spiritually. If this is a spiritual battle, would you fight against whatever's going on? Listen to this in Luke chapter 1, part of the Christmas story. This is about Jesus' uh, cousin being born who was going to go before Jesus. And this is his dad named Zechariah. And he's in the temple, and the angel appears to him and tells him, you're going to have a son, and he's going to basically announce that Jesus is coming. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. Basically, he says to the angel, this isn't possible. I'm an old man. My wife is old. He, he was, it was, by the way, you notice how diplomatic he was with how his wife is old, too? He said, I'm old. This, guy, this guy was a good husband. He said, I'm old. My wife's well along in years. See the difference? He could have said, I'm old. She's old. Smart man. He knew. Take care of your wife. I'm an old man. She's getting up there. Right? The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. By the way, you can see Gabriel all through the Old Testament. I stand in the presence of God. This, in the Greek, this is the idea that I see God's face all the time. And now I've been sent to speak to you and tell you the good news. But you didn't take it as good news. It doesn't say that here. He says, and now you will be silent. See, that really does sound like mafia to me. <laughs> and you will not be able to speak until the day this happens. By the way, one day mafia members will bow at the feet of Jesus, just so you know. Because you do not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. So there is a spiritual battle going on. There is spiritual warfare going on all around you, even at this moment. And that's not for us to sit and be worried about it, but we need to be aware of it so that when we pray, when we're dealing with things, we begin to pray for other people. My favorite verse, Romans 12, 21 says this, don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The difficulty is when we become aware of the spiritual battle, if we're not careful, we will focus on the evil. Angels never want you to focus on them. They want you to focus on God. And the Bible says, how do you overcome evil? Do what's good. The next time something happens in your life, maybe somebody says something insulting to you, maybe, just maybe, you wake up and you start having negative thoughts. Maybe, just like this movie, you're suicidal. This time of year, it is not uncommon uh, for people to talk about suicide or to struggle with depression. You need to realize that that is a spiritual battle. There is a spiritual battle going on. So what do you do? Overcome it with good. So think of something good that you can do. Go out of your way to be a blessing to somebody. Take a moment <laughs> to pray. If you begin finding yourself depressed, can I tell you one of the best solutions for depression is go and help somebody else to not be depressed. We will have service Christmas Sunday morning. Christmas is tough for some people. And I hope next Sunday at 1030 to bring a message that encourages you, that inspires you, and encourages you to realize, hey, it's not just about you. And we've got to go out of our way to bless other people. 
By the way, if you don't think that there are spiritual atmospheres, if you, you've been to a city, there are times you walk into a city and you can feel a spiritual battle. I used to go to school in New Orleans, and there were times, especially in certain parts of New Orleans, that you would walk into a place and you would go, there is something weird here. And you just felt it. There's places in Miami like that, and I honestly believe that that is also a spiritual battle. It's one of the reasons you and I should be praying over our neighborhoods. It's one of the reasons you should be walking. Every morning when I come here for church, I walk the parking lot and I ask God, God, would you protect this place? Lord, would you provide an environment so that when people come, they feel your love? Lord, for those who've been discouraged, that they would be encouraged. Would you protect us with your angels and, and war for us? Protect us from what the enemy tries to do? Because some of you this week have been under attack from an enemy who wants to defeat you. To keep you from doing anything good for anybody else. For, to, to keep you from being a blessing. To so discourage you that all you want to do is stay in bed. But you have a God who will fight for you. In Exodus 14, 14 it says, the Lord will fight for you. You need only be still, which literally means be quiet. Sometimes we have to be quiet so that God, we can hear God's voice and he know that he will fight for us. So your first challenge today is to do this. Listen, ask for God's protection and for his intervention. When's the last time you prayed for your kids? When's the last time you prayed for your grandkids or your nephews or your nieces? When's the last time you prayed for that neighbor? You know that one that has a struggle in their family and you can hear them fighting? I got to hear one of my neighbors fighting about a week ago. I can hear them. I was out in the front yard, and I could hear them fighting in their house. And I began praying, Lord, would you bring peace to that house? The Bible says we can pray for peace. Don't you think the enemy is involved in that? He wants to divide families and conquer people. So pray. God, protect them. Lord, bring your peace. So not only do we need to recognize the unseen battle, we need to receive God's plan for us. It's easy to begin to think that God doesn't care. Now, I look at this part of the story, and this is where the angel came to Joseph, because Joseph was thinking that Mary was crazy. So he was going to put her away quietly, the Bible says. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was helping God with planning, I don't know about you, I like to help God with planning. Don't you ever help God with planning? Like you tell him, God, I think this is what you should do. Like, Lord, you should just give our church a building next week, and that'd be great. You just take care of us. And God says, I have another plan. I'm like, no, no, no. Somebody could just donate a million dollars, so it'd be great. A few years ago, I had somebody give me a half a million dollars, so I figured a million's not that much more, right? So I said, Lord, they didn't even go to our church. That wasn't at this church, so it's not the bank. Don't worry. <laughs> but don't you ever have a plan for God? So if I was planning for God, I would say, God, you know what? Why don't you tell Joseph first... So he can know and then tell Mary. But no, no. God tells Mary. So she goes to Joseph and says, by the way, I'm pregnant. Huh? Uh, no angel told me, right? And then here's what happens. But after he had considered putting Mary away, it says, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what's conceived in her from, from the Holy Spirit, she'll give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. You know what's awesome about God's presence now? If you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit that lives in you. God can speak to you at any time. He can show you somebody that you should bless. He can show you where your thinking is wrong. And that's why we also have God's word. I want to challenge you. Ask God to reveal his truth to you through his spirit and through the Bible. Number three, not only do we need to recognize the unseen battle, not only do we need to receive God's plan, we need to remember God's favor. If you want to smile at Christmas time, you need to remember this. The angels even said God's favor rests. You know, God rests to Mary. Okay, that's what we're right. Remember God's favor on you. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Zachariah's wife, okay, and it says, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. Now remember, this happened first. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Christmas should be a time that you recognize that you're highly favored. Now, if I was Mary, I would not have felt highly favored. She's pregnant, has to travel, has to go to her husband's home, has to go to the in-law's neighborhood. And the in-laws are so disgusted that she's pregnant that none of them 
None of Joseph's, all of his relatives are there. Every family member extended, 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 extended. They're all there and nobody lets them come in their house. That's how rejected they are. I don't know about you, I would not feel highly favored, would you? There are days that I understand you will not feel highly favored. There are days that you will say, God, why would you let this happen to me? God, why do I have to struggle in this way? Why do I have to deal with this area? Why did I lose this person? God, why am I struggling in this situation? God, why do I have this hurt that just keeps coming back? God, why do I have to deal with this person? God, why can't I have the job I want? God, why? And God reminds us that regardless of the circumstances, you are highly favored. Just because you have difficulty does not mean you are not walking in God's plan. If that were true, Jesus would have been born in a castle. But instead he was born in a feeding trough. So thank God for the gift of his son this time of year. Take time to say, God, thank you. Why? Because that sacrifice led to the cross and that led to forgiveness for you and I who could not pay for our own sins, which led to you and I being able to be a part of God's family. God's favor is on you. Number four, we need to return to courage when we fear. Do you ever get afraid? There's a story about a missionary who was overseas and uh, uh, they had to go through a really bad neighborhood and they ended up having to cut through the street where there were gangs on both sides of the street. And this little missionary lady cut down that street and the gangs, she couldn't believe it. They left her alone. They didn't talk to her. They didn't mess with her. She walked right down the middle of the street and nobody bothered her. Years later, one of those gang members became a Christian. And after he became a Christian, he said to her, she said, hey, I just want to know, why didn't you guys mess with me that day I was walking down the middle of the street? And the guy said, hey, you had those two huge guys with you. We weren't going to mess with you with those two huge guys with you. She said, I, I didn't have anybody with me. He said, oh, no. No, you had two huge guys with you. God wants to protect you. You and I do not have to walk in fear. Luke chapter 2, one of your favorite Christmas passages. Even Charlie Brown likes it. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Do you blame them? You're out there, and you're seeing little beady eyes. You're holding up your torch. You're playing a flute. A liar. A little harp. Some of you are like, a liar? I'm not a liar. Anyway. They're looking out, and all of a sudden, angels appear. You freak out, too. He said, don't be terrified. Don't be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all the people today in the town of David. A Savior's been born to you. He is the Messiah. This will be a sign to you. You'll find the baby in a castle. No, you'll find him wrapped in cloths and lying in a feeding trough. You don't need to be afraid. The Savior humbled himself to the point that he was born in the lowliest of circumstances. None of you were born in this type of situation with this much rejection. But that's how Jesus was born. So that shepherds who were the rejected in the community did not have to be afraid. But they could come. They weren't even allowed in the temple. But they were allowed to come into God's presence in a stable with sheep and worship a Savior. When's the last time you asked God to remove fear from your life? In 2 Kings 6, there's an awesome story where Elisha uh, is surrounded and his servant that's with him is like, I'm so freaked out, we're all going to die. And he prays and he says, God, would you open his eyes? And it says his eyes were open and he saw chariots of fire. Not the movie, not the book. He saw chariots of fire around them and God used that army and blinded the other army and sent them away. You are surrounded by God's presence. You don't have to walk in fear. But I want to encourage you. Take prayer walks. Pray over your house. Ask God to protect your house. Ask God to guard your home. Ask Him to put guardian angels around your home. Pray that God... And by the way, you know, Jesus said sometimes we have not because we ask not. So ask. God's not going to look at you and go, 
I don't know why you would ask that. He said to ask. So not only do we recognize the unseen battle, not only do we need to receive God's plan and remember God's favor and return to courage, we need to learn how to rejoice with the angels. Did you know when you were singing today, the angels rejoice with you? If, if you, when you sing, now some of you are like, Eric, I don't sing. I do something, but what I do is not singing. That's okay. The Bible says, make a joyful noise. Some of you do that every Sunday, right? There was a pastor at another church, Peter Lord, and I would sit next to him sometime during church. The guy could not hit a note. And he sang loud every Sunday. Hark the herald, angels sing. I mean, just as loud as he could. If you were near him and you were good on pitch, you could never sing. You'd just put your finger in your ear and go, no idea. But he sang. Why? He made a joyful noise. And he knew the angels were rejoicing with him. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to, not the angels, to God in the highest Heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom, listen to this, his favor rests. You know what this word favor means? It means favorite. The angels looked at you and looked at me and said, you're God's favorite. You're part of his family. His favor rests on you, not on us, on you. And the reason we rejoice at Christmas time with the angels is because we realize, God, I don't feel like your favorite, but you said I am. My mom used to tell all the children that we were her favorite. I never knew that. One day I overheard her telling my sister, you're my favorite. I went to my sister after I said, does she always tell you that? She said, she tells all of us that. Oh, all this time I thought I was her favorite. <laughs> well, you're God's favorite. When he calls you on the phone, he says, you're my favorite. His favor rests. When the angel left him, he said, let's go to Bethlehem, the shepherd said, and see what has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Next time you're singing or rejoicing or praising God, realize that the angels, and be aware that angels rejoice with you. Finally today, not only do we need to recognize that unseen battle, not only do we receive God's plan, remember his favor, return to courage, and rejoice with the angels, you and I need to realize that redemption is for us, not the angels. In 1 Peter 1.12, it basically talks about the good news, and it says at the end, the good news told to you those things with the help of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which the angels desire to look. And what this verse is saying is, you and I receive salvation. Something the angels say, it's so awesome, we can't even look on it. The fact that you guys, Jesus was sent for you so that you could be part of God's family. Even the angels can't touch that. So take time to thank God for sending Jesus to forgive you. And if you're here today and you're not a Christian, this time of year, you can make the choice today to say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm messed up. I know that you came and were born and died for me. I want to receive your gift of forgiveness and I want to surrender my life to you. That's what it means to be a Christian. God sent angels in the Christmas story to remind you how awesome his power is, but also to let you know he is close. He is not far from any of you. You may feel far from God today, but I want you to know he's right there. Just reach out for him. And if you find yourself discouraged this time of year, if the enemy whispers to you that you're worthless or you're no good or you don't matter, begin to pray and say, God... Would you bring the thoughts that come from you? Would you spend time in God's word and read what he says about you and know that you're his favorite? He has favored you and that you would receive his blessing. We're going to have a time of prayer and then we have a special video uh, to close the service today while we're taking our offering. If after that video you need, need prayer, I'll be here. If you want to give your life to Christ, this would be a great day to do that. We're going to have a time of giving in just a moment. God gave his son for you. And as you give today, just remember that. God, thank you that you gave Jesus this time of year. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. I do thank you for your angels, for your power, for all you do in and around us. And Lord, we are very aware of the spiritual battle because we deal with it. and We see others dealing with it. And so, Father, we pray for your protection for our homes and for our families. 
Lord, I also pray for our church that you would send angels to bring peace and bring joy and to protect us from the thoughts of the enemy. That folks that come that have been discouraged would find your courage and strength today. And Lord, we thank you that you have overcome the world. Father, I pray for anyone here today who's never given their life to you, that today would be the day they surrender to you. Lord, I pray also that you would teach us how to pray, understanding there is a spiritual battle. And we, Father, want you to have the victory every day in our lives and in the lives of others. In Jesus' name, amen. You get what God's put on your heart today. It's a great little song.